we're going to be looking at today is how to properly measure. Being able to measure correctly is a very important skill for a chemist. So just as an example, would you want to put a medicine into your body where the active ingredient was haphazardly measured by a pharmacist? Probably not. So we want to focus today on how to measure things correctly. So based on what you think you already know about measuring, write down what you think the measurements below are, and then we're going to go through the answers together. So look at that first line and see how long you think that line is. And then there's a picture that looks like a beaker with some water in it. I'd like you to take a second, hit the pause button, and fill in what you think the answer should be, because I want to see where your mistakes are, right? Um, so t hit the pause button, write down your two answers, and then come back and we'll go over the right answers. Welcome back. Okay, so now what we're going to do is figure out how you're supposed to properly measure. So I'm going to go down here for just a second where it says every measurement you take should include. I'm going to fill that in and then we'll go up above and measure those two objects using these rules. Every measurement you take should include one guest digit. And every measurement should also include the unit. So let's take those two ideas of one guest digit and a unit, and we'll go to this first one where it says the line is, how long is this line? Well, when we look at this measurement here, that line is definitely bigger than three. So we know the three for sure. Then we start looking at those small tick marks. When you look at the number of tick marks between the three and the four, you know that this longer one right here, that would represent 3.5. So the one just to the left of that would be 3.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, right? So if this one is represents the 0.1 and this one represents the 0.2, Right here, we can see that that line goes just a hair past the point two. So we know it's 3.2 for sure, but then after that, it gets a little bit questionable. We have to take a guess. Remember that every measurement should include a guest digit. So I'm going to zoom even more to help us try and guess what that last digit is. So I don't think it's quite halfway between the 0.2 and the 0.3. I'm going to say that that looks like, to me, I think it looks like mm, maybe another 2, 3.22. And then for units, let's see, over here it tells me that this is a centimeter ruler. So my measurement would be 3.22 centimeters long. Now maybe when you were looking here, you thought like it looked more like perhaps 3.23 or 3.21. Maybe you thought 3.24. All of those would be acceptable answers. We all agree on the three. We all agree on the two, but after that, it gets a little bit questionable. And it's okay that we don't agree on that last digit as long as that last digit is there. A lot of people forget to include that guest digit, and it's really important because your eyes can see that it's greater than 3.2. And because you know that it's greater than 3.2, you have to write down how much greater you think it is than 3.2. So the last digit, what the last digit is, isn't really as critically important as the fact that you have that last guest digit. Let's try the next one using the same ideas. So this beaker with the water in it, if this right here represents 20 and here's 30, we know that it falls somewhere between the 20 and the 30. 
we know it's not quite at 30 yet. So we know it's 20 something milliliters. Now, the something is our uncertain digit. We all agree on the two. We know it's bigger than 20, but how much bigger than 20 it is is where we might disagree. Now, I'm looking at that, and I think it's just a hair past halfway. So I think it's 26, and my units are going to be milliliters. I think it's 26. Maybe you're looking at it, and you, with your eyes, think it looks like 25 or 27 or 24. That's okay. All of those are correct answers because... We have a guessed digit. There is no way for us to know what the exact right answer is on that last digit unless our instrument had additional markings. That's one of the reasons that we don't use beakers to measure liquids because the markings are so rough that we don't get a really accurate reading using those beakers. So now that you have this idea down, hit the pause button. I'd like you to scroll to this next page and you can see another ruler and a graduated cylinder. So try those two. Don't worry about this guy just yet. Just try those two. Hit the pause button, write down what you think the answers are, and then unpause it and come back. Okay, for this one, if you got the right answer, we all know that this line is definitely right here is 0.04. And we know it's definitely bigger than 0.04, right? So now let's start looking at the markings. The markings here between the 0.04 and the 0.05, this guy right here, wouldn't that represent the halfway point? So it would be 0.045, right smack in the middle of 0.04 and 0.05. So if that's 0.045, that means that this guy right here is 0.046. And we can see that it's definitely past the 0.046 line by quite a bit. It's almost at the 0.047 line. So I think that looks like 0.0468 centimeters. That's what my eyes see. But maybe your eyes saw 0.0469 centimeters or 0.0467 centimeters. All of those would be marked as correct answers on a quiz or a test. They're all right because all numbers, all measurements should include one guessed digit. This last guy here is, uh, if this measurement right here is 0.1, here's 0.2. So we know it's definitely bigger than 0.1. Now, what else do we know? Well, if that's 0.1, that's 0.2, that means that this right here, the halfway point, would be 0.15. So that means if that's 0.15, doesn't that mean that this guy right here is 0.13? And it's bigger than 0.13. If I zoom in, Right, there's 0.13, it's above that. So I think to my eyes, it looks a hair under halfway between 0.13 and 0.14. So I think it looks like 0.314 milliliters of water. Maybe you thought it looked like 0.133 or 0.132 or 0.135. Maybe you thought it was exactly halfway. All of those are correct answers. It doesn't really matter what your guess digit is as long as you include it. But what do you do if you think that the measured object falls exactly on the line? How do you do that? Because this one, even when we zoom in, it looks like it's 
just right on the three. So the three, uh, we think it's three, right? And we think that it lands exactly on the line. So the way you show that is by tacking on a point zero. Perhaps that line is really 2.9 centimeters long or 3.1 centimeters long. Perhaps we're not certain about the that it's landing right on the line, but we think so. So we think it's right on the line, so we add our guessed digit of zero. When you're using digital equipment, like our electronic balances in the classroom, the digital equipment guesses on the last digit for you. So if this was your screen on the balance in the classroom, it says here, circle the estimated digit in the mass shown below. So the last digit, this guy, the balance is not sure about that one. Perhaps this mass is actually 186.3130, or maybe it's 186.3132. Just like how we take a guess on the last digit, the balance takes a guess on its last digit. So there's no need to add any extra digits because the estimation is being done for you by the balance.